Welcome back to Robert Lowe, where I show you the ins and outs of graphic designers pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today I'm showing you how to make a realistic embroidered patch mockup in Photoshop. Now patches will become extremely relevant in the winter seasons as days get colder. People stop wearing t-shirts and turn to sweaters, jackets, hoodies, cardigans, and other things that covers your arms. And with this mockup, you'll be able to create a realistic picture for your embroider to go ahead and construct for a patch. Now this patch will be available for download on my Patreon account, so hopefully you're subscribed. But if you're not, this tutorial is simple enough for you to pick up and make on your own. So if you guys like this one, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, then consider subscribing because I do this all the time. And in the comment section below, let me know if you run an apparel company or t-shirt business. I'd love to know and I'd love to check you out. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and make magic. So just like any other mock-up that we would make, it would be in Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, what we want to do is just pretty much start a new layer. So this layer one is okay, but I'm going to go ahead and make another layer. And I'm going to dump white into it. Then I want to right-click on that layer and turn that into a smart object. Now with this smart object, I just want to go ahead and command J three times. And on these top three layers, I just want to turn the fill off on all of them. However, on the very top one, I want to turn off the opacity. And as a matter of fact, I want to go ahead and turn off that eye as well. Now I'm going to put all three of these into one layer and I'm going to call this layer effect. Now the very bottom layer is the pretty much the stitch layer. So we're just going to call that one stitch. The second layer, we want to call that detail. And this third layer, we're going to call shine. Now on the stitch layer, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I want to go into filter and then I want to drop down the Gaussian blur and I just want to put one radius of pixels on that. I'm actually going to do that to all three of them. However, back on the stitch layer, I'm going to go to filter, distort, and then ripple. And I want to give this a ripple of negative 125. I'm going to keep this size as small though. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now before I go any further, I want to go into layer 2, copy 3, and I want to name this one drop. Now I want to click on this one and then hit OK. Now this is a smart object and the reason why it's smart is because it holds everything inside of it. It's kind of like a folder that you can use for like different layers and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this layer and then I'm going to drop in a graphic that's going to serve as like that patch. Now that I got my graphic in there, I'm just going to go ahead and hit command S and that's just going to save it in. Now when I close down this layer, that layer appears over here on the actual document. Now as you can see, there's a ripple going on on this and when you zoom in, it kind of looks pixelated, but it's not. Don't, don't worry about it. It's not pixelated. It's just kind of rippled. However, what I want to do is go to my stitch and just kind of double click in and just bring up the effects layer. So there's a lot of things that I need to do, but the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put a texture on top of all of this. So what I want to do is go to bevel and emboss and then go down to texture. Now it's kind of already preset to the texture that I want already because, you know, I've done this a million times. But what we want to do is get that stitch texture into the actual document. So you go to the pattern and you hit the drop down. And as you can see, there's a bunch of patterns here. The one that you want is this one right here. It says stitch five. Just click on that and then you pretty much got it. Now you want to set the scale to 120 and you want to set the depth to 60. I kind of already did that because I do this all the time, but that's what you need to do. Now you need to go into bevel and emboss and kind of change some things up. So I've already done this, but I want you guys to kind of like follow along as I talk about it because this is what's pretty much setting the groundwork for everything to go forward. You want to go ahead and set the style to inner bevel and then the technique to smooth. You want a depth of like 500%. I know it goes up to a thousand, but you just want to keep it at 500% right now. You want the direction to be up and the size to be 10 and then you want soften to be zero now we're going to move down to shading and pretty much everything stays consistent so you have an angle of like 130 and you have an altitude of 40. you want the gloss contour to be leveled and that has an anti-alias on top of it by default the highlight should be on overlay and the opacity needs to be set to 50. the shading mode however needs to be multiplied and the opacity needs to be 35. once you have that move the inner shadow now the inner shadow is going to give you a realistic shadow inside of the actual pattern so it, it won't be on top of the pattern it's just going to be on the edges of the pattern so that's very important to have especially if you're trying to go for realistic type of mock-ups don't skip out on this step the first thing you want to do is set your blend mode to multiply and make sure that this is black okay then set the opacity of that to 25. You want the angle to be facing straight down, so that's a negative 90. No global light. If you use a global light, you'll mess up this design, so no global lights, okay? You want a distance of 5, a choke of 0, and a size of 5. And then you also want to contour it as linear. Once you have that, you're going to move the satin. So satin gives you a shadow that goes on top of the actual graphic. 
because I've already done this, like I said, it's kind of not showing. But for you guys, it'll probably look kind of gray and all that stuff. But this is what you want to set your layer style to. You want the blend mode to be screen. You want the opacity to be down to 10%. You want the angle to be straight up, so 90 degrees. You want the distance to be two and you want the size to be five. Now the contour, this time you're actually gonna use a half round contour. So once you get that, pretty much what you wanna do is just hit this drop down and go down to this one at the bottom left and then click on that. Anti-alias needs to be checked and inverted needs to be checked. And we're just gonna move on to gradient overlay. Now the gradient overlay is giving you a little bit more of that shadowing on the bottom. Not too much on the top, but pretty much on the bottom. So you wanna set this to soft light Give it an opacity of like 25%. I would even say 30 if you want, you know, so either 25 or 30%. You want to use the black to white gradient. So you want to click on this and you want to actually click on this one right here. So the one that's third off to the left or whatnot. And you want to bring the white in just a little bit. So I'm going to put mine around like 70%. You want the angle to be straight up, so 90 degrees. And then you want the scale to be 100%. And then for the final, what you want to do for this is put a drop shadow in. So you're going to go to drop shadow and you click on that. You want that to be set to multiply. You want that to be a 60% kind of thing. So put it at 60%. You want the angle to be 90 degrees facing up. I'm going to turn off the use global light. I don't know why that's on. Now you want the distance to be one pixel, the spread to be zero pixels, and the size to be three pixels. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to hit OK on this. And that pretty much just laid down the work for it. So as you can see this is starting to look more like a patch kind of like a carpety patch but not really you know all the way there but now we're going to move into the detail so i'm gonna go ahead and click on detail and i'm gonna go down to filter and then i'm gonna go down to distort and bring back in a ripple now with this ripple i want to go ahead and delete the negative sign and just keep 125 now this needs to stay on small and just hit okay now with this one we're just tweaking the detail so all we need to do is kind of fix the inner shadows and the bevel so i'm just going to go ahead and double click on this to bring up the layer styles then i'm going to click on bevel and emboss just to bring that up now what we need to do is change the depth to 100 percent and then the size to eight and then the soft into three and now basically what that did was give it a little bit more structure so when you look at it it's not just you know flat now it's kind of standing up just a little bit and that's kind of what we want because realistically a patch would kind of stand up off the background it wouldn't be flat down so it's kind of just standing up just a little bit and we could just move forward with that so we need to move the shading angle to 90 and then we will move the altitude to 20. So this is where things kind of change up. What we want to do is add a curve shading to the actual design. So what we're going to do is go to gloss contour and we're going to click down on this drop down and we want to go to this one right here, which is the second to the end on the left. It's called cone. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to double click inside of it to bring up this kind of little editor or whatnot. So what I want to do is kind of click on each of these points and just change it up just a little bit. So we're going to click on this one right here. And we're going to make this one an input of like 31. Then we're going to click on the top one over here. And we're going to make this one 53. And we're going to put the output to 53 as well. Then we're going to click on this bottom one over here to the far right. And we want to make this one 69 and keep this one at zero. And I'm going to hit OK. We want to keep the highlight mode at overlay. But we want to bring the opacity up to 100%. And then we want to drop the opacity mode for shadow mode down to 15. Now we can go into the inner shadow section of this and then click on that. We want to tweak these settings real quick. So what we want to do is turn the opacity mode for this one into 30. And then we're going to change the distance of this to 2. And that will be pretty much it. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Now technically at this point you're kind of done already. I like to add a shine to it just a little bit. And it's not really a shine that you're going to see. But it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. It's just stuff that you couldn't do in the detail because you've already tweaked the bevel and emboss. So I like to add an extra layer of bevel and emboss to it, which I call the shine. But before I do that, what I want to do is go into filter and then go into distort and then add another ripple effect. Now this ripple effect is going to be, of course, a negative 125 and I'm going to hit OK. Then I want to go ahead and double click to bring up that effects level and then I want to bring in the bevel and emboss. Now this time I want to bring the depth into a thousand percent. And I want to bring the size up to 10 and I want to bring the soft into 7. Like I said, all this is doing is building an extra structure. I want to keep the angle at 90, but I'm going to go ahead and change the altitude to 40. Then I want to bring the contour back to a linear and I'm going to let that go. Now here things kind of change up. I just want to bring the overlay to a soft light and then I want to bring the opacity for that to 60. But I want to drop the opacity for the shadow mode to 0 and then hit OK. Now technically that's it for this mock-up so we made this into a smart object and that's pretty good because what we could do now is just double click on drop and that brings us into this layer now i brought in this converse logo specifically for this because once we save it it turns it into a patch 
and then when we go back to that layer this is what we get so that's kind of powerful in its own making smart objects for backups is pretty cool and then all you have to do is just send this out to the person that's going to make the patch for you and they'll make that for you what i want to do is go ahead and turn that off and bring in my undergrads blue tiger and just go ahead and save that out and see what we get and as you can see that looks pretty good so the light is actually coming from like maybe the top of this and it's making like a gradient at the bottom and that's because we made that gradient there so anybody was kind of questioning that gradient that's where they came in at also the drop shadow is not too overpowering it looks as if it's rising up off the actual design that's the reason why we made that second layer so now i want to do one more just for safe measures just to make sure that this is working 100 percent right you know i just want to make sure you guys have the best possible design out of everything that i'm making because i don't want you guys to feel like i cheated you anywhere so what i'm gonna do is turn off this layer and then bring in my lips layer now these lips right here i made for a graphic t-shirt pack earlier this week so hopefully you guys are part of my patreon account and you guys can actually get this what i'm gonna do is hold down command and click on that and then i'm gonna go ahead and hit command and hit j just to make a duplicate copy and i'm gonna turn off that layer now inside of this i want to go ahead and start coloring this so i'm gonna click on my paint bucket tool and I'm going to go ahead and click into the color picker real quick and just kind of pick a color. So I feel like this red right here is okay. I'm just going to color these lips red. Then I'm going to make the tongue just a little bit darker on the red side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that there and just color that in like this. And then finally want to make the teeth white. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that to white and kind of just click inside of the teeth just to turn that into that color. And there you go. Now that looks pretty good to me, but let's just say you want to change the color just a little bit more. We can go back in here. We can just kind of change this color up just a little bit. So... I'm going to click in on here. We can change the color of this tongue just a little bit. We can actually make this tongue pink. And we can make this top lip just a little bit more darker than what it actually is. So we'll sample this out and then kind of make it just a little bit more darker. And then hit save. And with that last tweak, I declared this mock-up functional. So a few weeks ago, I made a mock-up for a t-shirt and realized the designers aren't really doing this anymore. And the reason why is because online has become a little bit more easier for you to do, which is very useful, but I feel like Photoshop should still be executed and you should be able to make your own mock-up. I feel like people aren't using Photoshop for exactly what it's supposed to be used for, which is photo manipulation and compositing. And I feel like people need to get back to this concept. It helps out your presentation. And it helps out you selling your design. You look a little bit more fancier when you do your own mock-ups. But that's really just my opinion. So if you guys like this one today, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, then consider subscribing because I do this all the time. As a matter of fact, I make a video every week. So there's always some type of value being uploaded on my channel. And if you're a designer or you run your own apparel company, let me know in the comment section below. I would definitely love to check you out. But with that being said, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. So stay amazing, stay creative, but above all else, stay awesome.